This happened only a few years ago, and I haven't touched any technology after what happened until now. See, I've been using technology since I was a kid. At 12, I learned how to write scripts and programs to hack into systems, and ever since, I was hooked. Fast forward, and I'm in my sophomore year at my university. I'm not quite good at hacking, albeit somewhat cocky. Throughout high school, I made a lot of money hacking. People would come to me normally to recover their hacked social media accounts or to hack into their boyfriend's phone to read their text messages. I was known as the guy to go to if you wanted something hacked. Even my school occasionally came to me for help if some script kitty just shut down the school's website with low orbit ion cannon. Like I said, I made a lot of money doing this through high school. Halfway through my current year, I started getting bored at this. The money was good, but there was just no thrill. One of my friends told me about this cool thing called the dark web. I had heard about the dark web before, but it never really seemed that interesting. My friend told me how it was full of drug stores, weapons dealers, hackers for hire, and a bunch of fucked up animal and child adult entertainment. As a hacker and a stoner, the dark web seemed right up my alley. When I got home that day, I fired up my computer and I did some quick googling. With my vast knowledge of technology, it didn't take me long to get set up with Tor's and Tails installed on my computer. I sped through the hidden wiki, finding most of the dark webs boring or dead. I texted my friend asking if he had any interesting link directories. He replied, here are only a few ones that I actually use. He sent me about five links to directories. I decided to click on the second one and see what I could find. I scrolled through the directories for a few minutes. He was right about how interesting the dark web was. I couldn't figure out where to start, so I clicked on a chat room. The website looked old and primitive, but surprisingly, there was one person online. I started talking to him. He seemed kind of shady, but it was better than scrolling through a bunch of dead websites. He said that he'd been on the dark web for a while. Finally finding someone with a vast knowledge of what's on the dark web, I asked him if he had any interesting links. He sent me a link, then immediately left the website. I had no idea what was hidden behind the link. Looking back on it, God, I wish I went and clicked on it. Now, at the time, my own curiosity overwhelmed me, and I clicked the link without giving it a second thought. After it finally loaded, due to Tor's notoriously slow loading time, I was presented with a pop-up box. It said in red text, If you don't know what's next, you're probably in the wrong place. There were two buttons, continue and leave. I instantly clicked continue, the biggest mistake of my life. It brought up a black screen page with a blood red title at the top of the screen. The Freak Show. In the middle of the screen, there was a chat box. A message popped up from someone titled, admin and he said hello and so I replied with hello interesting website you've got here he replied thank you are you here to view the show I thought to myself what show out of curiosity I replied with yes he said since you're a first-time viewer it will cost you 500 via Bitcoin in order to view the show future viewings are free from all the money I had made hacking, I had enough to fuel my curiosity, so I went ahead and paid the 500 After paying him, I was surprised. I was given a zip file instead of a link. I had developed a custom-made antivirus that appeared to work well, so I risked downloading it. When I unzipped the folder, there were two files inside. An installer and a file named readme.txt. I started by opening the text file, and it simply said, Do not send this installer to anyone, or else. I went ahead and closed the text file and opened the installer. It took about 15 minutes to install, which was strains for my computer. 
After installing, it opened up automatically. Across the screen, it said, Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. We use a custom program for our streams instead of live streaming on Tor due to Tor being too slow. We also need the extra security. After about 10 seconds, the screen changed to a countdown with the chat room next to it. At this point, I was starting to feel that whatever happened next would not be good. The next timer displayed that there were 30 minutes until the next stream started. I set my screen name to James Kent 157 Not my real name, but I needed an alias. I said hi in the chat, but was ignored. I waited the 30 minutes, and after the timer hit zero, a video feed began. On the screen, there was a guy in a mask with three people side by side in front of him. He started speaking with a voice changer to mask his voice. He said, Welcome to the 26th stream of The Freak Show. We are happy to see all of our old viewers and a few new ones. We will now randomly choose who gets to choose who to kill first and how to kill them. At that point, I realized I was fucked. I was in too much shock to close the window. I watched as the feed turned into a bunch of names scrolling by it until it landed on someone named Gore725. I watched as he made his commands. First stab him in the kneecaps and cut off his fingers. After that, gouge out his eyeballs. When that's finished, drill into his stomach. And to finish him off, burn him with hot metal. I watched as the sicko did all of this. I watched as the victim screamed in pain. After everything was done, he said, Now for the next one. After he said that, I snapped out of it and went to close the page. When I clicked on the X, it said, Sorry, no leaving midstream. I was trapped. The wheel popped up again, but this time it landed on me. I couldn't respond. Instead, I typed in the chat, You sick fucks, why are you doing this? I was met with all the people in the chat calling me names like pussy, dumbass, retard. I then said, I'm calling the police. I shouldn't have said that. The man of the stream then stated out loud, Call the police, and you'll be on next week's stream, Logan. That made my heart freeze. He knew my real name. He then continued to state out loud my parents' names, my address, school, age, and IP. I immediately went to Task Manager to close Tor and the program. As soon as Task Manager opened, it said, not responding. The man then stated, Don't try that in chat. I pulled the plug on my computer without a doubt. My screen went black. I frantically ran to my parents' room and told them everything that happened and told them that we needed to move away. They believed my story and called the police. The police took care of everything and put us under police protection. Within a few months, they found the website owner. He was a 32-year-old man who lived off the combination of welfare and the money he made from the Red Room. It was many years later before I finally started using technology again. The dark web is an abyss of terrible things. If you're smart, you'll stay on the surface web. But I can't control what you do. Remember back on the day in the news when dark web or deep web stories would come out? Every week you'd find a new tale of someone going too far and finding something terrible, and ended up getting attacked for speaking out against it. The story's a bit similar. The difference is, I still love the deep web. Now, let me explain. I was a senior in high school at the time, and I was definitely no popular kid. My friends were the oddities of the school, the few people who dared to defy the norm. It was them who told me about the deep web, a place on the internet where you are completely unwatched, anonymous, capable of doing whatever you want. Of course, I was intrigued. Most of my friends just used it to buy drugs, but I thought a little bigger. I wanted to know what happened in the darkest parts of the deep web. 
whether or not my friends were telling the truth, and when they talked about horrible fetish sites and assassins you can hire to kill anyone that you like. Of course, I wasn't planning on using any of it. I had never been particularly interested in sex, so fetish sites didn't interest me, and there's nobody that I would really like to have killed. It was the mystery of it all that fascinated me. Going to these sites would be like peering into a side of the world only a few people ever get to see. A wholly new experience. At the time, I was tired of the monotony of life. I'd get up at the same time every day, go to school, attend the same classes, talk to the same people, go home, play some games, do homework, go to sleep, and then I'd repeat. I wondered if anybody else got tired of that. Anyway, it took me a while to actually dive into the deep web. As fascinated as I was, I'd been warned of what could happen to me. I read the stories I talked about too. Who isn't afraid of being threatened by hackers or stalked by some creep you pissed off online? That kind of shit kept me from actually going to the deep web. Until the day I manned up and decided it was time to break the monotony. It was time to delve into the underbelly of the internet, time to see a world I had only dreamed of. For the first week or so, it was fucking boring. It was just drug sites and stuff where people were exposing government secrets or whatever. Nothing as dark as I expected. I don't even do drugs, so that was useless to me, and I wasn't into politics. There wasn't really much I was into back then, so I was disappointed. The only reason I kept exploring was my sheer desire to experience the world I thought existed on the deep web. That world was darker than any drug site. The world had murder, torture, fucked up porn for fucked up people, and all sorts of nasty shit. And I eventually got my wish. Just when my apathy towards the deep web got to its highest point, I found what I was looking for. The site didn't have a name. I thought it was a broken link for a bit since it only led me to a black screen. Right before I could click out, however, a chat box opened on the screen. Someone used the name Admin and typed in the chat box saying, congrats, you found the worst place on the fucking net. I stared at the screen, more bemused than afraid. It took me a moment to type back cool. That's all I said. What else was there to say? I'm here to see your finest torture porn? A moment after, the admin replied, haha, you want in? I hesitated, all those horror stories flooding back into my head, but it was too late to chicken out. This is what I came for. Even if I just clicked out at the first sign of danger, I had to see what was out there. I had to break the fucking monotony. I had to know. I hastily typed back, not even allowing myself to stop. Yeah. The chat box closed and I was led directly to what looked like a video with another chat box next to it. There were only five other people there, each eagerly waiting for something. The video was in black and white and showed a small room. The only thing inside was a wooden chair. Until after around five minutes of waiting, the door to the room opened. A man was shoved inside, blindfolded and naked, save for a pair of black briefs. He was followed by a woman, this one dressed in all black. Her face was covered by a mask. In an instant, the chat room went wild. I almost closed the window to spare myself, knowing immediately where this was going, but again, I told myself that this is what I wanted. Maybe not the torture, but the window into the worst parts of the world. The woman pulled out a sign and hung it around the man's neck. It read a name. Logan. That didn't mean anything to me, so I just continued to watch as she pulled out a knife from her pocket and cut off the man's blindfold as she shoved him into the chair. He didn't struggle for a moment, but once his eyes were visible, I could see why. It looked like he had been drugged. Resisting was impossible. I frowned, glanced to the side. 
This was fucked up. I knew this was fucked up. My conscience told me to call the cops, or at least to click out, but I forced myself to watch. She turned to the camera and pointed the knife at the man's throat. One of the people in the chat typed, one of his fingers, cut off one of his fingers. I clenched my hands into fists, taking in a sharp breath. Was this really fucking happening? Was I going to watch this guy get mutilated as a small crowd of people watched in glee? I felt like throwing up, a feeling that only worsened when the woman nodded and turned to the man, grabbing his limp hand and carefully sliced off one of his fingers. Blood spurted from the wound and the man moaned in pain, but he couldn't fight back. Breathing heavily, I hovered my cursor over the X, planning on getting the fuck out of there. But I didn't. The woman looked unimpressed, as if she thought the people in the chat could do better. Another person called for a slice of the man's arm, and she complied. He was bleeding heavily now, clearly in deep pain, but these people, these people were fucking sick. They were cheering her on from chat, suggesting new and painful torture for her to inflict. Eventually, I stopped breathing heavily. I stopped feeling sick. It was starting to grow on me. By the end, the man was on the ground, covered in blood and breathing heavily. I watched this for around half a minute. The people in the chat were starting to die down. They'd inflicted enough pain, and they had their fun. It seemed like things were wrapping up. Funny, I thought. How it was over just when I was getting into it. I smirked. This was exciting. This was better than any game I could play, much better than a class I could attend, better than sitting with a group of fucking nobodies pretending like I cared for a goddamn second about them. This was the world I wanted. This was the darkness. This was the underbelly. This was reality. Fucking end him. Slit the throat. I typed in the chat for the first time. She nodded for one last time, bringing the man to his feet before slowly dragging her blade across his throat, sending more of his blood spurting out. Once it was done, she dropped him, and he fell to the ground, limp. He was dead. The people in the chat started complimenting the torturer, talking about how it had been another good time, and started to set a date for the next showing. On screen, the woman left the room, leaving the corpse behind. Of course, I hastily wrote down the date for the next showing. This was going to be part of my life now. I was going to be part of something bigger. I was going to command these people's deaths. What a rush. So yeah, I still love the deep web. I'm in college now. And now, I'm even more immersed in the deep web. I've seen shit people would freak out just knowing exists. I fucked around on every sick porn site known to man. I've finally broken the monotony of life. Inspirational, right? How one high schooler defies the boredom inherent in his life by discovering his true passion. I love the deep web. One of the hottest trends on YouTube right now is ordering these random mystery boxes from complete strangers on the deep web and opening them on camera. I don't know why I didn't realize a clear majority of these videos are fake and staged with their scare factor, but I didn't. I thought it was a great idea and hopped on the bandwagon to claim my YouTube stardom that I desperately longed for. For those who don't know a lot about the deep web, it's simply a part of the internet that isn't accessible from your basic Chrome, Firefox, or Explorer search engines. You must download the encryption program Tor and the Tor browser for starters. It's not illegal to access this part of the internet, but since it is anonymous, a great deal of illegal actions happen here. The possibilities are endless. I grabbed my laptop that I'd had since I graduated in 2011 and downloaded the required programs. I prefer to use my laptop over my desktop in case of viruses and such. 
My seven-year-old laptop is a little bit more disposable. I had a little Bitcoin phase a few years ago when it first started to blow up, so I had a little saved already. It wasn't much. Only one Bitcoin, which translated to roughly 632 USD, but it was enough for what I was looking for. After the downloads were finished, I opened the browser and started my journey on the Hidden Wiki website. They provided a lot of useful links to get you started on the deep web. I scrolled through the warnings and gists of what it was and found the links that I was looking for. Almost forgot. I muttered to myself as I grabbed the duct tape from my desk drawer. I cut a tiny square piece at the end and placed it over my webcam. Call me paranoid, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I clicked on the first link and waited for what seemed like forever for the page to load. It was another very plain page with a list of popular websites that you could scroll through on the side. I continued my search through the web links until I found a page dedicated to mystery boxes. I wanted to find one around 500 so people knew I meant business on my channel. These were relatively small, staying around the 0.125 to 0.5 Bitcoin range. I was worried about being scammed. I decided to continue my search after a quick bathroom break. When I came back, I noticed my cursor was off to the side and I was able to click on a link that must have matched the background color of the webpage because I couldn't see it. I indulged in my curiosity and I hit the link. I was taken to a pitch black page with small white text near the top. I'm selling one random package to any brave enough to receive it for only 0.12 Bitcoin or best offer. Only one, huh? I thought to myself. I'll shoot my shot. I hit the small payment button and was asked how much I'd like to spend. I entered 0.1 BTC with fingers crossed. The payment went through without any hesitation and I was instantly met with a chat box asking where I'd like the package sent. I knew this wasn't a good idea, and I regret it to this day, but the other YouTuber channels use their own address often, so I thought nothing of it. I gave them my home address. I waited over a month for the box to come. 36 days to be exact. It arrived directly on my front porch and was wrapped numerous times in red tape. I set my camera on the tripod and adjusted it to show me and the box on the small wooden table. I draped a sheet in the background so it looked a little bit more professional. I collected some gloves and scissors so I can bang the video out in one go. Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's vlog. Boy, do I have a surprise for you. I continued my monologue mentioning how I got the box and how much I paid. Without wasting further time, let's open this deep web mystery box. I grabbed the scissors and cut along the red tape. I make sure my gloves are on tight and I rip the box open. Then my brow furrows as I see just one book. Without saying a word, I take the book out of the box. I was pretty pissed I spent over $600 on a book. Well folks, looks like we just got ourselves a dud. These pages better be made of gold. The outside of the book was old and tattered, and it smelled of mildew and mold. I cracked the book open to the first page and glanced over the contents. All right, bros, it looks like it's an old photo album. Smells of old rot. Let's look at these pictures. I show the camera a few of the page contents, and it has four pictures on the first page, all labeled by days. The first picture said day one, the second day two, and so on. The pictures were taken with an old Polaroid camera. There were pictures of airplanes, random suitcases, Couples of taxis and some pretty shady motels. These really do look like someone's old travel photos. I continued flipping through the pages. Every day was a different photo of nature or cars or trains. Day 18 held the oddest photo yet. It was just of a mask, handcuff, a gag, and a bottle of some sort of drug it looked like. These people have one hell of a fetish. I tried to keep the video interesting. I zoom into the picture with the camera so everyone can see it. Around day 32, things started to get weird. There was a picture of a house, but not just any house. It was the house I grew up in. My parents' house. My hands covered my mouth as I gasped for air. How is... How is... Th how is this... 
I'm unable to form a sentence. I'm at a loss for words. Day 33. I turn to the page to see a man and a woman handcuffed and gagged, and I immediately expel the contents of my stomach as I see my own mom's scared and crying face and my dad face first in a pile of what looked like black tar. Day 34. This photo is taken inside what looks like a vehicle. I focus my gaze to the dashboard where a small photo is barely visible. It's an old school photo of me, there in my dad's truck. Day 35. Another house, but this one is much smaller. The photo is too blurry to make out the details. My hands are trembling and all I can hear is my heartbeat pounding in my ears. I flip to the last page. I immediately throw the book to the ground and run to the window. I jiggle the hatch frantically and throw it open. Without hesitation, I jump out and run to the neighbors. As I'm running, I turn around for a brief second. What I saw haunts me to this day. A tall, hooded figure stood in my room, looking at me through the window. It stood motionless before lifting his hands and waving. I screamed for my neighbor who hurried me inside and called the cops. I sat and I just cried. I cried out of fear for my life. I cried for my parents. I cried because all of it was my fault. My lack of common sense got my parents killed and I have to live with that forever. If you access the deep web, do not release any personal information. Even if people on YouTube do it, most of it's not real and always check your boxes. It would have saved me a lot of trouble if I would have noticed the box I received had no tracking sticker on it. It was hand delivered. A couple of weeks ago, my neighbor a few houses down was on the news. Something bad had happened and apparently it had to do with some sort of mystery box that he bought off the deep web. I don't really know, but I didn't really pay attention to it much. I just heard about it in passing from the living room when my parents were watching TV. I had actually downloaded a Tor browser a long time ago to use the deep web, but never ended up using it. After seeing the story on the news though, I got curious and decided to take a look at the websites on the deep web. There was just a bunch of messed up porn and such, but finally, I found one certain website other than porn and was still sickening. It was a website dedicated to torture and experiments on humans. Some were homeless people that volunteered while others were people who were unlucky and got caught by these sick fucks. I had seen stuff like three guys one hammer, so I thought I'd be prepared for what was to happen. Man, was I so wrong about being prepared for this sick shit. When I clicked on a gallery, it showed videos of pictures and videos of people being experimented on. It included humans' reactions without food and water, being shown to extreme pain and torture and other things. After scrolling through the page, I found a gallery with nothing but babies and toddlers. These pictures were so gruesome and cruel that I'm not going to even try to describe it, but I had to resist the urge to vomit. Somehow, I managed to scroll through the whole page and when I made it to the bottom, a small message box popped up. When text was typed into it, I realized it was a chat box. The text read, Did you enjoy the site? I typed in my keyboard, Who are you? He ignored my question with another question. What was your favorite part of the site? When I asked again, he gave in and told me he was the creator of the site. I told him it was sick and twisted and that I was going to report this to the police. It was a few minutes of silence before he replied. Ah, I see your name is Michael and you live in Massachusetts. It was true, but I thought he was bluffing, so I typed, no. You're wrong. After that, he typed my address. My full address. Fear ran through me and I exited out of the browser, then called the cops before even calling my parents. When they made it to my house, they asked me to show them the website, but I had already exited out of it. And unlike a normal browser, it didn't save your search history. 
The cops then told me calling them was the wrong approach, and if what I had said was true, we should find a place to move to. Luckily, we had already been searching for a new place to move to anyway. I was surprised by how fast my parents were able to sell our house and move into a new one. For a month, I apologized every day for the trouble I caused them, but soon enough, it was like it all had faded away. But I still think about how that guy on that website had gotten my address, and if he was bluffing, or not. This occurred not long after I turned 18. My girlfriend had also turned 18 a few days ago, which meant her parents had finally trusted her and I to be alone in the house while they went out for dinner. My girlfriend had always been a fan of horror films and creepy things in general. She loved reading creepy pastas and watching dork and gory films such as Hostel and Saw. One evening, I was sitting with her while she finished watching the last few minutes of The Human Centipede. We both had a few drinks and I was about to go to bed, but she suggested that we look for another horror film to watch online. Despite my tiredness, I obliged. A few minutes of searching on her laptop revealed all of her favorite online film sites had been taken down. That's when she suggested a chilling alternative. Ever heard of the dark web? She asked. I had heard whispers around school about it, but never took much interest. Yeah, I have, I replied, trying to act brave. A smile of excitement appeared on her face. I could tell she was slightly drunk and in that sort of, I don't care what happens mood. I decided to go to the kitchen to fetch her for some water. When I came back, I noticed she had a site open called Sensor View. The site displayed the pictures of movie posters I had never seen before. I correctly assumed it was a site that had sold banned horror films from other countries. All of them looked pretty unoriginal, nothing I hadn't seen before. All except for one. The one my girlfriend was hovering the mouse clicker over. The display picture was simply a white background with the visiting written in aerial black font. We were both fascinated as to what it was. I took out my iPhone and searched for the plot of the film, yet I found nothing. Just a few stupid YouTube videos and irrelevant forums. However, when I looked back up from my phone, I caught a glimpse of my girlfriend typing in her name and address into various boxes on a page titled Order Details. Before, to my horror, she clicked the submit button. I was caught in a stage of anger and shock. I maniacally shouted at her, explaining how dangerous it was to disperse her personal details in such a fucked up place on the dark web. I could see my attempts to correct her were futile, as the alcohol was hitting her hard and she was not paying attention whatsoever. Frustrated, I went to bed deciding I would discuss it with her the next morning. The next morning, she seemed to have a little regret over her actions. She spent the morning explaining to me how she was curious and she was in no danger. She even commented that the experience would be fun. However, I wasn't convinced. She told me not to tell her parents and fearing they would not trust her to be alone in the house again. I promised not to say anything and headed back home. Three days later, I was visiting her house again. Her parents had gone out to meet with some friends from work for a drink and we were watching The Exorcist on DVD. During a particularly non-eventful part of the film, my girlfriend began joking about how horrified I looked only a few days ago when we were discussing the dark web. She said she had only received a fairly professional looking email confirming the order and nothing else. I began to yield to her argument. Perhaps I was overreacting. It was seriously seconds after our conversation finished that an aggressive knock came from the door. It sounded like it was from two doors, but I dismissed this as an echo. I began to look concerned while my girlfriend began laughing once again at the look of terror on my face. I put on a fake smile as I walked towards the door. It erased clean from my face when I saw who stood outside. A tall stocky man wearing a ski mask and dark clothes stood in the front door wielding a hammer. I was about to call out to my girlfriend to call the police when a blood-curdling scream echoed through the house. I raced back into the room to see my girlfriend pointing at the window facing the garden. An identical man stood in the window, only he was holding a small bat. 
I grabbed my girlfriend's hand and sprinted up the stairs. We hid in the master bedroom while I called the police on my mobile, who told me they would be there as soon as possible. As I finished the call, I heard one of the doors smashing and allowed rapid footsteps heading up the stairs. They were in the house. Without thinking, I pushed the window open and told my girlfriend to jump, run, and not to look back. She jumped and landed safely into the grass garden below. I was about to follow, but hesitated, wondering if I could put up a fight and in so doing, allow my girlfriend more time to escape. It was then that I heard a deep, aggressive voice just outside the door. The man shouted something in a foreign language, whilst I heard laughs from two other men outside. All bravery evaporated, and I jumped, landing harshly on my ankle. The adrenaline racing around my body allowed me to power through the pain, and eventually I caught up to my girlfriend. We were running for what seemed like hours, but in reality, it was most likely just ten minutes, and we ended up next to the local park, a safe distance away from the house. My girlfriend began sobbing, and I comforted her, trying to avoid my own desire to break down. It was not long after that when the police called me on my mobile. They were at the house, and as far as they could tell, the attackers were gone. After taking a few minutes to compose ourselves, my girlfriend and I made our way back home. There were three police officers at the house. One was examining each room for any damage or evidence left by the man. One was comforting my girlfriend, and while the other was asking me questions. The shock was clouding my memory. I was only able to tell them a few details about their clothing and the fact that they spoke in an Eastern European language. My girlfriend handed over her phone and computer for the police to investigate, and they left. They advised us to tell the homeowners of the situation, lock up, and suggested that everyone spend the rest of the evening with friends or a relative. So we both spent the night at my parents' house whilst my girlfriend's parents stayed with friends. I remembered my girlfriend crying over the phone while telling them about the situation. They were furious. A few days later, the police visited my girlfriend. It was by luck that I was at her house that afternoon. Their investigation had led them to some disturbing findings. It turned out the visiting was a nickname locals in a small Polish town gave to a number of brutal murders that occurred in the 90s in a local area. The murders were committed by an unknown gang and were initially dismissed as home invasions gone wrong. All the victims were bludgeoned to death in their homes, although nothing of value was taken from the house. It was only two years after the murders began that a family survived an attack by the gang. The husband was able to tell the Polish police a few details of the attackers, but all that they revealed was that they wore ski masks, wielded blunt objects, and one had a video camera. However, the crucial evidence was that one of the attackers had dropped a backpack containing one blank videotape and three other tapes with content on them. The three tapes showed the horrific murders of the other victims of the attackers. The police came to a shocking conclusion that these men were creating snuff films to be sold to whatever sickos paid enough for them. A nationwide manhunt began, but after years of investigation, nothing was found. I remember feeling incredibly cold as the police told me their findings. They went on to tell me that the men most likely had fled Poland due to the police search and could possibly have entered the UK as workers when Poland joined the European Union. The only thing they knew for certain was that these men were operating once again, decades after their last murder, and that they were using the dark web as a way of deciding on their next victims. The police told my girlfriend's family to move in with a relative while their investigation was ongoing. It was not long after that that my girlfriend had broke up with me by her parents' wishes. I assumed her parents suspected me of forcing her to use the dark web. My girlfriend discovered later that various documents containing her information had been taken from the house. I'm not allowed to see her, but our parents still speak. From what they tell me, her mental state has become incredibly fragile. It has broken my heart to hear this. I can safely say that the police will never find the attackers using the information I gave, which means they will most likely strike again. I can only hope next time they do, it will lead to those bastards ending up behind bars, and not the creation of another tape to add to the collection. Be safe, and avoid the dark web.